In Jesus' most agonizing moments before his crucifixion, he commanded Peter, James, and John to watch and pray. Jesus then went on to moments of fervent prayer in the garden. Unfortunately, those disciples failed in their assignment, and Jesus found them sleeping instead of praying. In this study, Evangelist Scott Pauley will lead us and challenge us to watch and pray, to pray faith-filled prayer for God to move and work in our generation. Be sure to listen after the study for details about a special prayer resource Scott is making available through this series. And now, let's join Scott Pauley. In the New Testament, we have the development of what we call the watch and pray principle. And we really have given a lot of emphasis and attention to our Lord's usage of that because he's the one who really gives the most powerful uh, exhortations to watch and pray. But I want to back up in our this point in our study to show you that this is the need of all of God's people at all seasons and that watch and pray while while it's really emphasized in the New Testament, and we'll return to the New Testament at the conclusion of our study, but it's woven through the Old Testament. In fact, there are three distinct places in the Old Testament where you find watching and praying connected to one another and connected to God's people even in difficult circumstances. I'm going to give you, over our next three studies, three Old Testament pictures. You know, pictures help you see things, right? They they show you truth. They, they give an illustration of the instruction. So let's begin today with one picture you can hang in the gallery of your mind, one picture that will help you see what it means to watch and pray, and it is a historical picture. It comes from history, specifically from the historical book of Nehemiah. I, recently, I read through Nehemiah again. What a book it is. You should read it. But when you come to Nehemiah chapter 4, Nehemiah and the people of God are having a hard time. In the opening verses of Nehemiah chapter 4, they're dealing with mockery, and then it gets worse. It intensifies. By the time you get to our text today, they've come all the way to physical abuse. But the answer to the adversary was this. They were going to watch, and they were going to pray. (laughs) Let's read it. Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 7, But it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were very wroth. You know, Satan is hateful. He's angry. Why do you think there's so much hatefulness and harshness in this world today? And you can tell a lot about a person by what they get angry over. Here, good things are happening. The walls are being repaired. The, The city is being rebuilt. Wouldn't you think everybody would rejoice? Oh, no. No, it's at those moments where the devil loves to push back. Everything God ordains, Satan opposes. Everything Christ is building, Satan's trying to tear down. Every time the Lord is moving forward with something, there's going to be friction because Satan is going to try to stop it. Verse 8 says, And conspired all of them together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder it. I must tell you, this does not sound good. This sounds very negative, very pessimistic. And yet, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. Friend, if you're a Christian, you're on the winning side. So let all the world and all the hounds of hell come against you today. God is greater. But what is your responsibility? Here we come to our verse, Nehemiah chapter 4, verse number 9. Here is the historical picture God gives us and a great principle and application for us. The Bible says, nevertheless... We made our prayer unto our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. So the enemy comes, the opposition arises, uh, things are, are a struggle. Maybe that's where you are today. They're a struggle. Well, I want to tell you that the way to respond to the enemy, the answer to the adversary is always the same. We must watch and pray. Now, you're going to have to make up your mind to do it because it won't be easy. That's what the word nevertheless means. In other words, in spite of that, not after that, in spite of that, in the midst of that. And you'll have to choose it. We made our prayer, the Bible says. It's intentional. 
If you live in victory, if you press on through the struggle and stress and strain of life, it will not be on accident. It will have to be on purpose. But here's what you need to do. You need to watch and pray. Notice the two words. First, we made our prayer unto our God. And second, we set a watch against them. Now, there are a couple of interesting words here. They're directional words. Notice, we made our prayer unto our God. Prayer is always Godward. I want to recommend to you that you not get fixated on the enemy. When we say watch, we're not talking about uh, simply concentrating on everything that's going bad and everything that's going wrong. No, prayer lifts the heart to God. Prayer is getting an eye on heaven. Prayer is directing yourself upward and not outward. And so this is very important. We made our prayer unto our God because only God can sustain you. Man can't do that for you. Maybe you're looking for reinforcements today. You're trying to find some people to help you. Uh, Look, don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in the Lord. He is a very present help in time of trouble. He's the refuge you're looking for. Don't look for relief somewhere else. He's the refuge. Don't let anything substitute for your prayer life. We made our prayer unto our God. And then the Bible says, and set a watch against them. So unto, that's Godward. Against, that's manward. And so uh, we, we pray, yes, and we also watch. The idea here is to stay on guard. Uh, don't relax, spiritually speaking. Don't let down your guard. Uh, you know when there are moments that you're in a spiritual conflict. That's not the time to give flesh any room. The Bible says make no provision for the flesh to appeal or to appease the lust thereof, to, to satisfy the desires of your heart. Don't make any room. Look, you give flesh a little room, it'll destroy your life. You give the devil a crack in the door, he'll bust the door down. You give the world just a little place, an entry point, a foothold, it'll take the whole thing. No, you must watch. And I think this phrase is very important. The Bible says day and night. Remember, in the Jewish idea, there were watches in the night. Uh, But there's also a watch during the day uh, because at any time, At any season, uh, the enemy can come around to you. Now, we're going to come back to the Old Testament. I'm going to give you not just a historical picture. I'm going to give you a devotional picture from the Psalms and a prophetical picture from uh, the book of Habakkuk. Uh, But let me tell you what all three of the pictures have in common. All three of the Old Testament watch and pray scriptures are all in the context of conflict. All of them are in a battle. And I want to remind you today, you're in a battle. This is not a game. This is war. And you're living near the front lines. Satan hates you because he hates your God. And maybe the warfare has intensified. The the temperature of the battle has gone up. The battle always gets hottest just before it's won. So watch and pray. Press on. Fight on. Stand on. At every season, day and night, no matter what the enemy's saying, no matter how you are feeling, no matter what others are doing, you watch and pray pray. I want to have a prayer for you today. And while I pray for you, I want you to pray. And I want us to agree together in prayer today that God will keep us strong in the face of Sanballat and Tobiah and every enemy Satan may send against us. Father, I thank you for this this word, watch and pray. And I thank you for the illustration of it, the picture of it in the example of Nehemiah. Dear Lord, we know you're doing a great work. You're building your church today. We're a part of the greatest building project in the history of the world. So help us not to lose heart. Help us not get discouraged and get our eyes on people and off of the Lord. Father, I pray for every man, woman, and young person listening to me right now that you'll strengthen them in their inner man. You'll help them to stand and press forward. You'll give them the grace today to watch and pray day and night and help them see the victory through the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you guilty of the sin of prayerlessness? Do you know the mechanics of prayer, the form, the right words, but struggle to pray, to have a consistent prayer life? Scott would like to provide a resource for you that he believes can help create habits of prayer in your life. His resource, 30 Days of Prayer, is available for download on our website, enjoyingthejourney.org, and also in the show notes. 
We thank you for listening, and we hope you will join us for each lesson from this series. And may the Lord help us as we seek to have a consistent prayer life. Thank you.